procedures around reuse of equipment, how to redistribute, how to recycle and dispose of it, which is the last one, um, because we felt that was really important, just like I said earlier. Um, going to the web has been huge. Our communication with parents, we wrote our own student or a parent portal where all kinds of data about students reside, and so um, we kind of pushed that e-communication in that regard. I'm not going to tell you that we, you know, we've not gone anywhere near paperless. That's a holy grail, but I don't think any of us really uh, get to. There's just seems to, I think we all, we've turned everyone into a publisher these days of what we've done, so I think we're using more paper than ever. Um, we are doing huge amounts of desktop virtualization. You already saw my numbers earlier. Almost 30% of our fleet is virtual in some way, shape, or form, mostly through end computing products, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Uh, Windows 7, Mac, I mean, a lot of the different newest OS's are very uh, targeted. They really target energy efficiency in them. So that's another area you can look at. Oftentimes, it's a little hard to get some data on that, um, around that, on how much it's saving you. But it's definitely uh, something to be done. And one of our newest ones is number 15. Um, we knew we were coming to the end of our, our bond funding. We knew we had a lot of old PCs at our high school. But we kind of felt like um, we had a chance here to do something new. So we went ahead this year and we rolled uh, both of our high schools virtual clients through Citrix using you know six, seven, eight year old PCs in labs, in classrooms, using Citrix. So we deliver all the computing power now sitting back on a server and we're still utilizing these old PCs that are not that green. I'm not going to tell you they are, but we're keeping that life cycle longer and not throwing away as many assets now. And really, that's going to save us money. Now, to do something like Citrix in a brand new installation, I don't think we'd save anything. In fact, it probably costs us more. Although, the nice thing about it is you can upgrade, rather than upgrade two, three hundred machines, you can upgrade five, six, seven servers, lower cost, and a lot less stuff to throw away down the stretch. Um, so, um, some things we did. Um, we kind of have gone a little bit on the PR side with our program. It's one of those things we like to get our message out. I mean, technology work. If there's any group that's like not showing themselves publicly, you know, we get behind our staffs and cubicles and offices, and sometimes some of that's better off. So we've tried to do a little public relations. I think that's real important. To your own boards, tell people what you're doing. If you have a district wide green program like Irving or their new school, it's a great public relations thing. So share your message. Um, we went to co with a uh, partner with COSIN and became one of the first green community certified school districts. Not a real rigorous process, but uh, we went ahead and decided we'll do that. Um, we also uh, have got a little PR. Uh, I think part of it, you know, having our website and that public information uh, helped us share our story. And so we had some media attention. Uh, Technology and Learning was, had a great article, a partner with us, uh, had a cover story being Leaning Green, so that featured uh, Jetson's programs. Um, we were featured in Coast and Weather and Storm Companion in 2010. East School News had a case study. So this kind of stuff kind of you know self fulfills and builds on itself, but it's nice. It lets people you know know your message and know what you're doing. And sometimes schools need some positive public relations. Let's face it. I mean, sometimes bad things happen, uh, and you know the, the news media likes to jump on those other things. Certainly not technology aware, but um, all right. All right, so I'm going to take you into some of the numbers real quick because I don't want to spend too much more time. Um, I'll talk about a few of our programs. Um, our end computing project, um, we, we had a choice. When we had a lot of bond funds, we know we wanted new machines for teachers. We had enough money to do that. We had enough money to do some labs, you know, kind of the traditional stuff we all deal with. But we also knew we wanted to give kids more access, especially at the early primary levels of classrooms. Where a lot of times there's, there's centers, the kids are working in groups. But I didn't have enough money to roll out computers in a large number in that kind of situation. I also didn't necessarily have the electricity, the network drops, in some cases for that as well. Those things all cost a lot of money, and we only had so much. Um, so what we decided to do um, is if we want, like I said, we want to increase computer access. Money was a huge issue here for us. So we chose this thing computing device. Y'all are probably pretty familiar with these or heard of them, where you have a PCI card sitting in a computer, and then um, these little black boxes are the, the next three computers, and you can get this in different flavors and, and, and certainly virtualize in a, in a larger group if you want from one computer. But it's basically the equivalent of a VMware or virtualization on a really small scale from one computer to, to multiple. But I wanted to show you the numbers that we got out of this and what it did for us. So we deployed 761 computers. Actually, we got a little higher than this now. I just haven't really calculated all the numbers. Um, and then added from those 761 computers, another 2,283 uh, computing seats. So you know, that's a total of several thousand computing seats right there. Um, and the cost is where it really gets interesting. So talk about buying this. This is real important up front. We only had so much money. Um, if we had done a traditional PC deployment, we estimate our cost at 
obviously we didn't want to do that. Um, now, if we had to grow our network, it could have been another huge cost. Because, you know, traditional PCO, you're not going to build a network for it. And there's a lot of costs around that. Um, so, in our case, um, we bought those 700, 761 PCs, the main computing devices. We did, like I said, we signed a pretty good catalog of our monitors, which we didn't have to do, but we decided that was the right thing to do at this point with this project. Um, the bottom line is our total acquisition cost was $1.1 million. It's less than half the cost of a traditional PC deployment. So we really got a lot more bang for the buck, and that's what it was all about, was giving more access for our kids in the classroom uh, for computers. Um, it's works great with a fixed, fixed environment, you know, cable environment. Not so great, if, you know, for a one-to-one -one initiative, this may not work really well. But it worked well for what we wanted to do and what we could do. Um, we did it at elementary and uh, middle school. I don't know if instruction at the middle, I was a little worried about the middle school, you know, whether or not that was going to be a, the right, when you look at the periods and how quick things happen and, you know, kind of like they talked about this morning's uh, lecture, I, I don't know if that model fits real well. It's worked really good in science labs and places like that in middle school, where they have a, some great research stations that can be used in a lab environment. Right. Do you limit the software on the We're pretty tight on our which I makes it easier for support. Yeah. I mean, it didn't work for you? No, I had to, after I got tired of the teachers and they didn't do what they wanted to do with elementary, so I threw it out. So, they, boxes and you couldn't put software on it? Or? 